the scripture that I will be using this morning is in Jeremiah chapter 35, where you have a man called Jonadab, a son called, times called Johanadab, is a man who would have sung, Jesus, lover of my soul. Here's a man so gripped by the word of the Lord, gripped by the Holy Spirit, that he affects six generations following him, 240 years down the line, his descendants remember him. And that's not because of Jonadab's strength. It's because the effect of the word of the Lord on his life and on his children. I read to you Jeremiah 31. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord during the reign of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah. Go to the Rechabite family and invite them to come to one of the side rooms of the house of the Lord and give them wine to drink. So I went to get Jezaniah, son of Jeremiah, the son of Abazaniah, and his brothers and all his sons the whole family of the Rechabites, I brought them into the house of the Lord, into the room of the sons of Hanan, son of Igaliah, the man of God. It was next to the room of the officials, which was over that of Maseiah, son of Shalom, the doorkeeper. Then I set bowls full of wine and some cups before the men of the Rechabite family and said to them, drink some wine. But they replied, we do not drink wine because our forefather Jonadab, son of Rahab, gave us this command. Neither you nor your descendants must ever drink wine. Also, you must never build houses, sow seed, or plant vineyards. You must never have any of these things, but must always live in tents. Then you will live a long time in the land where you are nomads. We have obeyed everything our forefather Jonadab, son of Rahab, commanded us. Neither we, nor our wives, nor our sons and daughters have ever drunk wine or built houses to live in, or had vineyards, fields, or crops. We have lived in tents and have fully obeyed everything our father Jonadab commanded us. But when Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, invaded this land, we said, Come, we must go to Jerusalem to escape the Babylonian and Aramean armies, so we have remained in Jerusalem. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, saying, This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Go and tell the men of Judah and the people of Jerusalem, Will you not learn a lesson and obey my words, declares the Lord? Jonadab, son of Rechab, ordered his sons not to drink wine, and this command has been kept to this day. They do not drink wine because they obey your forefathers' commands. But I have spoken to you again and again, and yet you have not obeyed me. Again and again I send all my servants, the prophets, to you. They said, each of you must turn from your wicked ways and reform your actions. Do not follow other gods to serve them. Then you will live in the land I have given to you and your fathers. But you have not paid attention or listened to me. The descendants of Jonadab, son of Rahab, have carried out the command their forefather gave them. But these people have not <coughs> obeyed me. Therefore, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. 
listen, I'm going to bring on Judah and on everyone living in Jerusalem every disaster I pronounce against them. I spoke to them, but they did not listen. I called to them, but they did not answer. Then Jeremiah said to the family of the Rechabites, This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. You have obeyed the command of your forefather, Jonadab, and have followed all his instructions, and have done everything he ordered. Therefore, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Jonadab, son of Rahab, will never fail to have a man to serve me. You should also have your Bible open to 2 Kings chapter 10, which I'm going to be referring to as well, because that is where you're going to read about that first time we meet Jonadab, where he's called Jehonadab, son of Rahab, that is in 2 Kings chapter 10. Being Father's Day, I want to encourage all of you fathers, and I know most of you, your sons and your daughters are out of your home. But being a father, it's not a part-time job. You are still a father. You have to hold your children up. And you are a father to your grandkids and your great-grandkids. And you young men sitting here, you are going to be a father someday by the will of the Lord. As I said, foundation of culture, the building block of culture is the family. That parent, you fathers, and I'm sure you mothers in with it, I believe you have a goal for your family. And if I asked you to get out your pen, and right on that bottom part of the bulletin, what is the goal for your family? What goal do you have? What purpose does your family serve? What is it that you want to see in the lives of your children and your grandchildren, and your great-grandchildren, and I believe I know the answer because you're all sitting here in church. The goal of my family is that they know God, and they glorify Him joyfully forever. If that is not your determined goal, I believe your family life is chaotic. I believe you do not have an anchor by which you are making the decisions in your life for your children, for your grandkids. This Jehonadab, who you will read about in 2 Kings 10, lives at the same time as Jehu. And if you remember Jehu, we have a great remembrance of Jehu because frequently people say, well, he drives or she drives like Jehu which means absolutely reckless. And Jehu lived, we would say, an absolutely reckless life. He's king, and 
God called Jehu to destroy the family of Ahab, which he does. First part of chapter 10, he has the 70 sons of Ahab that are still living, all arrested, their heads are cut off and placed in baskets and placed at the gate of the city. But there's still some other effect of the family of Ahab, and that is Baal worship. Baal worship is humanism. It's the belief that man is able to control his environment. Man is able to decide what is right and what is wrong. In Baal worship, it was very sensual. There were prostitutes, male and female, at the temple. And by making use of the prostitutes, your corn and your beans and your cattle and your sheep would reproduce abundantly. And this worship greatly, greatly influenced Israel. And many Israelites fell in this disobedience. But in the life of Jehonadab, you'll see him, and first there in verse 15, Jehu meets him and says, are you for me? Are you against me? And Jehonadab says, I'm for you. Because, I want this to be up front with you, the word of the Lord is effective in the life of John and Adam. We don't know much about him, but we believe he heard Elijah. We believe he was there on Mount Carmel when the contest between the veil and, and God took place. He saw the fire come down from heaven. He witnessed all of God's presence. And that really determines who a man is. Those who know God, not know about it, but know it know the prophecies of Elijah and Elisha, Elisha, knowing that God is going to bring Israel under the curse of the covenant. And Israel is going to go into captivity. And there's going to be no priests, no prophets, no parents teaching their children he knew something like Moses' parents when they know Moses is going to land up in Egypt in the courts of Pharaoh where they're never going to hear the word of the Lord. That mother and father had a few years to instill into Moses' heart and mind what you and I would call apologetics. Apologetics. Knowing what is the truth and knowing how to defend it. Because you and I are not training children and grandkids and great-grandkids so they don't embarrass us. We are training them in a much deeper way that the faith that God implanted in you through your parents or through someone and that lives in you is being passed down to your children and your grandchildren. That's the purpose of your heart, right? The purpose of your life. That's the theme of your family. I'm calling you to that. I'm not here to condemn any dad at all. I'm not. 
is calling you with the word of the Lord. That's what we see in John and Adam. And so when Jehu says, you come with me, we are going to destroy Baal worship. You remember that story? It's in 2 Kings 10, where they call a great worship to Baal. It's going to be a great worship. Every worshiper of Baal must be here. If you're not in the temple, we're going to kill you. Because we're going to honor Baal. And by God's word, remember God's word works in the believer and the unbeliever. There's no one that is not functioning according to the word of the Lord in their life. It says in verse 21, the word went throughout Israel and all the ministers of Baal came, not one stay away. That's God's work. God works in the lives of some to bring him, you know, to change their hearts. And they love him and they know him. And their lives rejoice in him. There are others whom God gives over to disobedience. That's the word of the Lord. He doesn't intend to, to say Like Jonathan Edwards preached so effective. The unbeliever is there to bear the wrath of God eternally. God isn't trying to save them. Their purpose is to bear the wrath of God. These worshipers of Baal, whom God has given over to disobedience, to live in darkness, they all come to the temple and they're all given robes and then Jehu says, Jonadab and all of you check, there may be any worshippers of God in here, double check. And then they slaughter every prophet of faith. They're all destroyed. And Jonadab is in there killing them. That's who this man is. This man, the effect of the word of God, he sees there is no compromising with unbelief. Stand firm. Put on the whole armor of God. And what you and I teach the next generation, gen next generations, all of that is rooted in only one thing, and that is in the Word of God. John and Adam is participating in this by the effect of the Word of God in his life. And you see the temple is destroyed. And you look at verse 21, the temple of Baal becomes a public toilet. By the grace of God, he is a man that I believe is a man we need to model as fathers, as mothers, young people. Because we live at a culture, at a time where the church is collapsing. And it collapses because of the fathers in the church. I'm not talking about this one. By the grace of God, I appreciate every father here that I know. I need you. We need you. You strengthen us. You encourage us. You inspire. You motivate us. Praise God. I don't know whether you listened to the news about the Senate this past week. 
by the grace of God, the Synod maintained its stance on human sexuality that it decided last year. And when you read the reports, you know what they said? It's the younger pastors and the younger elders who are maintaining, who have this wonderful blessing of truth. That really encourages me. I have been discouraged <laughs> looking at the denomination, not looking at this congregation. You strengthen me, and I think you and I strengthen each other. Now, when you get into the 35th chapter, this Father, in whom the Spirit of God lives, you read about him in verse 6. His descendants, now I want you to know we are six generations from, from, from Second Kings. We're 240 years down the line. Got that? This family is tested by Jeremiah. And they are living in Jerusalem now. They had to come out of the country. They says we had to do that to, to protect our lives because the invasion of Babylon by the Babylonians has taken place, which God prophesied. And the sons of Rechab are going to be taken into captivity. They are not going to have prophets. They're not going to have priests. And yet the word of the Lord is going to be maintained. Because the word of the Lord that comes through fathers and mothers is effective in the lives of the sons of this man. And so here they are in this room. They're bowls of wine, full of it. They're cups. Help yourself, help yourself, help yourself. And they said, we don't drink wine because our forefather Jonadab, son of Rechab, gave us this command. Neither you nor your descendants must ever drink wine. Now you say, wow! What a very conservative, backward dad they had. I don't care what you think. Drinking wine is not a problem. Living in houses is not a problem. Having a vineyard is not a problem. Jehonadab knew if my family is going to live in the comfort of the knowledge of the Word of God, if the Word of God is going to be effective in their family, I am going to have to have a counter-cultural home. And this is what he decided. And he saw blessed by the Word of God in his life, as I believe you have in yours, and the effectiveness of the Word of God in his children's lives. Jehonadab, long dead. These descendants could have said, I don't care. I don't care what Dad said. Or Grandpa. Or Great Grandpa. And you'd have to say, great, 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 great grandpa said, the word of God still lives in this family. And they say to Jeremiah, we will not. Because we honor our father. And we will continue to honor him. That's the effectiveness of of the Word of God. In your family, there are probably things that you have, you remember, you know what's happened, 
You've had family worship all your life, I hope, huh? I think a lot of you were brought up in a home where you prayed before you ate, correct? And then you read the Bible after you ate? And then you prayed again? That was family worship? Three times a day? And then when you went to bed, mom and dad were there, tucked you in, and then you had to pray, now I lay me down to sleep. Foolish? The word of the Lord. It's wonderful. You and I live in a culture whose goal is to destroy the family. That's its goal. They want to reinterpret marriage, your understanding of gender, <coughs> the legality of the gay lifestyle, transgenderism. It's all summarized in the rise of the self. It's all about me, my desires, my life, and there is no one that's going to stand in the way of me fulfilling me. That's what you see. And for that to become ingrained in culture, dad and mom have to be bulldozed out. Because you're the only thing standing in the way for this immorality to blossom. May God give you, dads, grandpas, great grandpas, whatever you are, grandmother, what, and you young men. May God give you the wisdom. May God give you the power. May God hold you steadfast in the Word so that your children walk before the Lord. all the days of their life. We don't know what happened to the family of Rahab. We know they were brought into captivity. But God says at the end of Jeremiah 36, you have obeyed the commands of your forefather, Jonadab, have followed all his instructions, have done everything he ordered, Wow, because God is in them. Therefore, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says, Jonadab, son of Rahab, will never fail to have a man to serve me. We assume Jonadab's family helped rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. We believe John and Ab's family, some of them sat with the 5,000 that Jesus fed. We believe, since the word of God is true, there could have been his family in the early church. 
that the Holy Spirit is poured out upon them. His family, were they involved with St. Augustine, the great changes of the Roman Empire? Were they involved in the Reformation? Martin Luther? John Calvin? Did they come to the shores of America with the pilgrims? We don't know. But the word of the Lord is saying this very moment there are sons and daughters of John the in the church. Building, strengthening, encouraging, motivating, comforting. May God bless every one of you fathers. And you have sons and daughters that are physical, you have them spiritual. May God bless you and may you live to see faith in your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren. Amen. Father, Father, we praise you for parents in whom your spirit lives, whom we look to and their wisdom, their leading, their guiding. It's not only their words, it's their life. How they live, how they love. We know your grace and your mercy through them. We pray that you continue to bless every father in this auditorium who's listening to this message. May you grip them with the purpose of their fatherhood, that they are there to train sons and daughters and generations to come to know you and to glorify you. We pray also that you will bless Bethany Nyford. We pray for your blessing on this little baby blessing for wisdom for the doctors may you father by your word so orchestrate all things that this baby is born healthy and bethany is well and we can give praise and glory to you of your faithfulness we pray this in Jesus' name.